All right, so today, class, I'm going to teach you how to fold this box. And it's not too difficult. It's a lot of fun to fold. And you end up with these little petals, I guess. I'm not really sure. One of the things you can do when you're done is curl these. Makes like for a nice effect. But let's get started. So if you use two color paper and you want the color to be on the top, we're going to start with the color side up. Otherwise, it's going to be white and then the color will be on the box. So if you want this one, you start with the white side up. If you want this one, you start with the color side up. So I'm going to be making this one here. All right, let's get going. So first step, divide into diagonals all the way around. All right. Now, once we've done that, we're going to then divide it into eighths, all valley folds, um, both diagonals. So what you can do is start out doing a Lint fold all the way around. And we just keep on keeping on. All right. So once you get that, want to do that? What you? Yeah, we want to just keep going. So take this point, this point here, and we're going to fold it to that point right there. Another thing to look out for when you line that up, you want to look down here to make sure that this line matches that line. So you want to do that on both sides. All right. Maybe I'll try and do it really fast, like how they speed up the cameras and in some instructions. But no, we're not gonna do that. You gotta, you gotta just do it one step at a time. All right, so now these little guys here, I'm gonna fold up to the line, basically dividing this in half. Go ahead and do that all the way around. Now what we're going to do is take a look, find your center, and you'll see that you've got a river here or whatever, one here. So we're going to be dividing this one in half and the next one in half, but not, not these. So we're just dividing this in half, this in half, this in half, this in half, same thing here, 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 here. And the best way to do that is to just take this, so if we're dividing this in half, we're just going to take this point and we're going to fold it up to that point, kind of like we did before, except things are smaller. And again, you want to watch out down here and over here. So just make sure that that's lined up nicely. All right. And again, line that up. I mean, if you do everything right, if you line that up perfectly, everything else should just fall into place, but it's something you want to look out for. And here we go again. I see I'm a little off there, so I'm going to fix that. All right. And one more time for this one. So again, we're folding it up to that. Sometimes what I like to do, like if my lighting's not good, you can fold that down because then sometimes it might be easier. I mean, for me, white on white's a little difficult, but you know, if you're having trouble finding that point, it's one other way you can do that. But 
In this case, it doesn't really work. All right. So now, what we did was we divided these guys in half, because again, that's the center of the paper right there. So now we want to do the next big band. We want to divide that in half. And the point you're going to look out for there is going to be this point, but what's going to happen is you're going to start having all these lines all over the place and it's not going to be so easy to find exactly. Soon you'll have one here, maybe you put it there. It's just when you, when you do this, just look out and find that point there when that divides that in half and then you'll see clearly which line, which horizontal line you have to find. And then just fold that down. Again, so again, you know, it's like you got all these lines now. And if you do it wrong, what's gonna happen is this is gonna be too small. You're not gonna be exactly in half. So you really wanna keep an eye out down here just to make sure that you really fold that in half. I usually hate doing grids, but this one isn't too bad. Because I always make mistakes. So, that's looking good, yeah. The paper's a little dirty, and it's got these weird creases right here. So don't pay attention to those. So now we got a nice grid going here. What we want to do at this point, turn the paper over, and hold it so that it's horizontal, not like this. You want to hold it like this. And so what, what you want to do, we didn't fold horizontal and vertical, and that's cool. We don't need to. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold this edge to the center of the paper. So all you have to really do is just find the center. I mean, it really shouldn't be that difficult. There's a lot going on here, but just find the center. And then you've got this point here, right? So you want to fold that right to the center. And the other place to look is to make sure that that point is perfectly lined up with that diagonal. That one's lined up with that diagonal. And that point is in the center. And then we fold that all the way across. And we do that four times. One, two, three, four. All right. Sorry, I was moving out of camera. It's the hardest thing to remember is keeping the paper in view. Okay, so these are all valley folds. And what you wanna do is do this again with the valley fold up to the new crease that you just made there. So you just pop that joint up there. All right, fold that in half. Undo, and guess what? We get to do this three more times. Oh joy. But that is origami. And one more time. See, I'm going kind of fast here, but you should really take your time, pause the video, make sure these things are lined up nicely. Because there's nothing worse than a dirty model when you're done. All right. The fun part of origami. No, we're getting to the fun part. The fun part is when you finish it and look at it, admire your creativity. All right, so once you've done that, you should have something that looks very confusing and lots of lines and doesn't look like it could possibly be anything. I hope I didn't mess up. No, I'm just kidding, I didn't mess up. So this is the important part because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the collapse now. And to make that a little bit easier, I think what we should do is do a little bit more pre-creasing here. So what we're 
we're going to do is you need to find your center. And when you find the center, you're going to see four blocks around that center. And maybe I'll get a pen here, make this a little bit easier. So here's your center. I hate drawing on origami paper though. Um, and then you've got like this small square that's right, you know, that's surrounding that center point. What, we, what you want to do is identify the next largest square. And that square happens to touch on these horizontal folds that we made. Right here, right here, right here. Because right now, um, this is going to be the body of the box. And so the valley folds that we're going to make, they have to be done on this square here, right? And so what's going to happen is, if you hold the paper horizontally like this, you fold along these diagonals here that meet that point. So again, here's your center. It's basically two squares up. There's your center. And it's a pretty common shape. I'm sure you've seen it. Maybe not, but it's like when you do something like that. All right, so we're, we're, we're basically going to be doing this on all four corners. And then in order to do that, these edges here have to fold out. Right, so it's a little bit tricky and it kind of helps to work out up off the table because when you've made this shape here, what then you want to do is find this fold right here. There's like a fold crease right there. Can't really see it, but what you want to do is take this. a little valley fold here, right? And these are all existing creases. They just happen to be valleys. And we're just sort of, from this point, from this perspective, we're changing them to mountain folds. Um, so we just want to fold that to the center. that and do the same thing on this side here so again I'm just gonna take that and then that gets folded down like so so we have something that looks like that so to do kind of do that again Maybe, right? So we started out here, and you just open that up. You have this L or this corner here, and you want to like in like reverse fold, and then squash here and here, and kind of fold that up. And again, all existing creases. You're not introducing any new creases here. You're just changing from mountain or from valley to mountain. And then you should have something that looks like this. Where this corner is right there. All right, so now we wanna do the same thing on all the other sides. Um, it should be fairly easy at this point because really, all you're going to be doing is finding that same point. So again, here's the center. Here's that point we just folded. We're doing the same thing, so it would be four squares up. And you kind of see how that paper is already, you know, because of the pre-creasing, it already wants to make that point. That we switch it from what is valley here make it a valley here and then this gets folded down one thing to look out for is make sure that this point and this line everything lines up nicely here so same thing here 
so we were here. Put this out. This is what, you know, what is a valley here? We're making it into a mountain on this side, a valley on this side. Last one, you kind of have to do two at one time. Um, so start to pull it out. So it should be clear also that this line here, one, two, three, four, you know, because we're working with the square here, that this is where the mountain fold is. So open up the paper and then just sort of pinch and then make those same kind of folds and shapes. Don't force anything. It should all be on existing creases. But again, some are mountain, you're converting it to valley. Some are valley, you're converting to mountain. Oh, my finger itches. All right. Somebody asked me one time if I get a lot of paper cuts doing origami. I didn't really think about it, but no. Okay, so you should have something like this. And you should have four free corners right there, right? So we're gonna turn it over. And if you look closely at each, I guess, part of the cross or whatever, you'll see that you have an X here, and then there's a horizontal crease. You have an X here, and then a horizontal crease. So what we're gonna do is, you may need to pop your finger inside this bit here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna pinch these two corners together. And what's gonna happen is this horizontal line is gonna basically become a valley, and then this is gonna become a mountain. And so if we start to pinch and just be slow about it, Again, all existing creases, no new creases are being added. You should have something like that when you do the pinch. And then just pop your finger in here and flatten that down. Some things to look out for is just to make sure that you get a nice point here. You wanna make sure this lines up nicely here. Now, when you do this, we will be introducing two new creases here. You can see there and here, right? So now we wanna do the same thing with this cross or X or whatever. Now you'll notice that we don't have a crease here, but that's cool, we'll add it. Um, but just don't worry that you're not missing anything there. One way to make this a little bit easier is you'll notice that you have these two horizontal lines or vertical, depending on how you're holding it. Um, if you inside reverse fold these, right? Inside reverse fold that. Then what happens is when you pinch this, you already have, these guys are already folded. So we just sort of pinch that and push that up like we did the other one. Now, when you do this, paper might shift around a bit. What you wanna do is just wanna make sure you don't have anything like this. So if, if your point isn't lined up or you have like a little bit of space like that, then just fix it. You know, now's the time to just roll that over a little bit, make sure that that point is nice and clean. Fold that down. And we have 
have something like that. Now you have a single flap right here. So fold that joint up. And then fold the whole thing down. And when you're done, you should have three little petals or whatever. And guess what? We get to do that three more times. But just like with origami, I mean, once you do it once, it should be quicker and easier the next time. So again, pop your finger up in there, pinch this along this vertical line or diagonal or whatever, flatten that down. See, I'm trying to go fast and it's getting all dirty. Right, make sure that's all lined up nicely. Pull this down and we do the same thing. I'm gonna inside reverse fold these guys. Now here's an, I mean, you can just make sure that that's lined up nicely there when you do this uh, reverse fold or whatever. And do the same thing here. Just make sure that's nice and Right, and then pinch lay that down on the side. Oh, this paper is pretty ugly color. Got them color blind, so maybe it's me. Right, so then we just fold this guy up and fold the whole jammy down. Give it a nice, nice crease. And again, one more game. Boom, flatten. Real quick. Time is money. All right, a little bit dirty there, but we'll recover from that. Okay. So now you could technically just fold these down like that, but you got to be careful because it's paper so thick here that you might get a little paper creep and this guy might want to like shove out a little bit. So that's why I like to give it a fold up here first, just to kind of establish that and then take that whole thing, fold it down. Just makes her a nicer finished product, I think. So there's little details that matter. So we have a pinch, make sure that's nice. Button like that. Do the whole pinch in again. Actually, I am gonna do a little pre creasing here because those folds don't exist, so you can fold those over and then do this side reverse fold just to get those set up. And then we do the pinch. Flatten, flatten that, fold that up, and then fold that down. All right, so now we got this. Looking pretty good. Take a look, one, two, three, four. You've already got these, if I hold it like this, there are these diagonal creases here and here. All you wanna do, you got this flap, just fold that behind. Make sure it's nice and straight, make sure your points are nice and straight, make sure that's nice and tight, and then just fold that down. Now, you do have like a little pocket there, or I mean, not a pocket, but if you kind of look at it, you don't you don't want to put it here. So you just fold it 
you know, just basically like a simple melt and fold. Right? Bada bing, bada bing. And again, we get to do it three more times. done. Alrighty. So this is where the magic happens because right now it's boring, it's flat, you know, how is that a box? That doesn't make any sense. Take your origami finger and pop it up into one of the corners so that it's right here. So you're not, you know, there's really only one spot to put it. But if you start to puff up that area, and that's why we stick our finger in there is to, to sort of help that. Um, you just start to pinch and push this out. And then what's gonna happen is this, you already got this, that, that center little square that I was talking about early, early on. Those are gonna naturally just fold. So that pinch is basically from this point to that corner of the square that's almost naturally occurring as you start to pop this up. And we do the same thing here. And the same thing here. And the same thing here. And then just make sure it's all nice and straight. Make sure that that meets the corner exactly because sometimes it might shift around a little bit. Now early on when we were doing our grid in the beginning, we could just as easily have made these creases but it's a boring step so i don't really want to do it and there you go you have just made a box that i have not named just yet i have no idea what to call it but there it is and then if you wanted to you can give these guys like a little curl that's like a nice little effect I mean, I'm just doing it the cheap way, but you, if you have like a tiny little, like a chopstick or, you know, something that you can use. Let me do, you can do the last one here. And it just creates a nice effect. You can curl them up, you can curl them down. So there you have it. He's a little unfinished, but this is what they all look like. I hope you enjoyed the video and post a comment with a link to the finished product if you actually make it. Take care.